Kenya mm -hmm. consumes uh, about 45 million bags per year. Mm -hmm. Because on average, a Kenyan consumes 100 kilos mm -hmm. of uh, obunga mm -hmm. uh, per year. On average, mm -hmm. uh, some people from some parts of this country mm -hmm. uh, consume uh, almost uh, 130. <laughs> My guest today is a long-time friend, Honorable uh, Kipruto Kirwa. We happen to have gone to school together. We actually became friends uh, during our secondary school days. Yeah. Uh, when I joined Mangu High School, he was in Form 2 yeah. when I was in Form 1. In those days, we had this thing of monos, mm -hmm. so he was my protector. <laughs> uh, those days, yeah. uh, Honorable Kirwa uh, is a scientist. Uh, Honorable Kirwa is a politician. By the way, most people don't know the idea of YK92 where it came from. Yeah, yeah. The actual person who did the crafting yeah. of the really uh, uh, movement was Honorable Kirwa mm -hmm. uh, because he had this idea of yeah. developing youth to take over Kenya. That's it. And uh, we discussed it with him, mm -hmm. and that is how it came up. Yeah. So welcome, okay. Mwishimi Wakiru. Yeah, thank you so much, Yes, uh, Cyrus. It's my pleasure to share again, uh, after so many years of not being together. Yes. Yeah, you remember, as IGAD Special Envoy, I was away for four years. Yes. I came back, and uh, we are doing small things uh, yes. all, over, all over the country. Mm. Uh, I do agree with you that uh, the YK92 was initially in a paper which was 28 pages, uh, 27 pages, uh, that we named a Khan Youth Group in the framework of national development. Yes. So, but you improved on it mm -hmm. and created a serious network of young people who, for very good reasons, were able to stabilize politics in Kenya. And I do really appreciate and of course other people took it differently mm -hmm. and uh, we want really to share with them mm -hmm. that uh, it was intended to stabilize politics mm -hmm. because in Africa when you don't create stabi stability in change of leadership mm -hmm. you are likely to tip over the country to a crisis mm -hmm. that is unconstitutional or also that is not very friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the second issue is that also to accept that for five years ago Mm. We were together in high school. Yes. And uh, I was one year ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> now those were the old good days. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice days. We, we, we reminisce on that with a lot of nostalgia. Yes. And I thank God for it. Mm. Now, coming back to Africa, uh, I, I, we've been externalizing our problem. Yes. That our problem is uh, due to external factors. Mm. Yes, to a certain extent. There are some external factors that influence politics in Africa, mm -hmm. uh, either for good or for bad. Mm -hmm. But also there is a lack of genuine leadership in the continent mm -hmm. where the ruling elite become complacent uh, about uh, the affairs of the nation and they spend more time uh, doing what we call primitive accumulation of wealth mm -hmm. that does not assist the country to grow. Mm. Today, if you asked many African leaders, what is your biggest worry? Mm. Uh, you have 10 days to live. Mm. What is your biggest worry and what is your prayer? Mm. They will be worried about their families. They will be worried about their wealth. Mm. They will not be worried about their country. For sure. Yeah, the late uh, Mwalimu Julius Nyerere, mm. uh, through one of his assistants, mm. when he was in London being treated for for some ailment, mm. and he knew his days were numbered. His main worry was, will the things that have uh, Im built and supported in Tanzania mm. going to remain? Mm. One, genuine national unity. Mm. Uh, two, leadership that is reflective mm. of the aspirations of the people. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Kenya or in many other countries, the worries of those leaders are different mm -hmm. from what uh, Nyerere uh, did. The second issue that is affecting um, Africa mm -hmm. is the lack of interface between the leadership and the people. Mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that um, 
decisions are taken and uh, public participation is reduced to a minimal mm. in a way that uh, the people don't own the projects. Mm. So the projects uh, will belong to the regime. Mm. And that is what we are trying to cure at Union Kibaki One regime, where we were able to reach out to various professionals uh, throughout the country, including some international scholars, like the late uh, Kalesias Juma, mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and others yeah. for purposes of uh, creating what we were terming as national council mm -hmm. for economic, uh, national social and economic council. Mm -hmm. That is a precursor to vision 2030. Mm -hmm. So that the public owns it, uh, professionals own it, and uh, every Kenyan uh, has a chance to participate mm -hmm. and uh, give us a vision that is commonly shared. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the issues that uh, we feel are needed in Africa. Now, uh, generally, it is now becoming acceptable across board that uh, among us, the Kenyan president we've had, Mose mm -hmm. uh, was the best president mm -hmm. for this country. All of us know that uh, the biggest problem the Kenya has had has been on its foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, tri tribalism was entrenched mm -hmm. at, in, at, uh, at independence. Yes. And this has been uh, the norm throughout uh, the five regimes uh, that we've had. Apart from the first uh, term of Mosaic Baki, which was generally a government of Kenyans, mm -hmm. and that it was one of the most uh, successful uh, and the country was very hopeful, mm -hmm. and it was a successful regime. Mm -hmm. But uh, five years later, uh, as much as Quebec was so successful, he was struggling uh, to win an election mm -hmm. in the Republic of Kenya. What are these strategies mm -hmm. President Kibaki used to be so effective? I think our main mistake in Kibaki one mm -hmm. is that we did a lot of things, and uh, uh, largely because he allowed us to make decisions at the level of the ministry. And the minister, in his own wisdom, uh, would be able to compose a team that uh, would be able to percolate down to various units in, within the ministry and within the country. And those units would be able to assist uh, to calibrate parameters for measuring performance, uh, which parameters were used to uh, measure performance of each and every ministry as a way of competition. We even went further to create what we were calling Rapid Results Initiative, uh, which was supposed to be a measure within 90 days. What would you have done in three months uh, for purposes of ensuring that uh, there is constant review of the strategies that we put in place. Uh, so we did not effectively communicate to the public for the public to own it. The second challenge that we faced is the issue of transition from the vice presidency of um, uh, the late uh, Michael Wamalwa Kijana to the new arrangement because the rapport that Mzee Kibaki has structured with the late Wamalwa, had he lived the five years, uh, that system would have been so stable. When the late Wamalwa passed on, other co competitors <laughs> who expected uh, to benefit from that uh, demise uh, did not sit well with them when Mze Moody was appointed the vice president uh, because in the original arrangement where the eight of us in the summit had some kind of power sharing, we had agreed that upon promulgation of a new constitution, uh, Honorable Kalonzo Mushoka will be the second vice president or the other vice president. Honorable Raila would be prime minister. The late Saitoti would be the second prime minister. No, no, the, the deputy prime minister, the first deputy, Jared Tengilu, second deputy, and myself, the third deputy. Now, when elections were won, some of those things went under the, 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 the cracks mm -hmm. and did not see the light of the day. So that created a bit of discomfort among some of the original team members that uh, teamed up with us to form National Rainbow Coalition. 
So that created a bit of disquiet. The, the third thing, which is very important, which, because it's still persisting up to now, is the issue of tribal arrangement. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, we still lack effective national cohesion. Mm -hmm. There is trust deficit among communities in Kenya. Mm -hmm. That's why when you see political parties, they are fashioned around arrangement of two communities, two leaders, three leaders, 10 leaders, 26 leaders coming together under some kind of coalition. Mm -hmm. And it's for that reason that for the last 25 years, no political formation has formed the government twice. Mm -hmm. Remember, we started with NAC, now we are talking of Kenya Kwanzaa. In between, there are other derivatives of the same, mm -hmm. whether it's a coalition, uh, whether it is a, a, an entity called the party. That is something that we still need to work on because I strongly believe if we don't kill the tribe, mm -hmm. uh, we, we run the risk of destroying this country. Mm -hmm. Remember, we say the three things at independence that we needed to fight was poverty, ignorance, and disease. Mm -hmm. We never lifted our values to the level of uh, fighting Udini, mm -hmm. Ukabila, mm -hmm. Ufisadi, mm -hmm. Na Urangi. Mm. Those, those four things could have lifted us to another level of values. Mm. Because you see, you can fight uh, poverty by stealing. Mm. You can fight, uh, fight uh, disease, of course, through hospitals and, and so forth. And uh, ignorance, you, you take people to school. But you are not inculcating in them the values of what it means to be a Kenyan, mm. what it means to be, uh, to, to be a member of this society, mm. what is my responsibility as Kirwa mm. to, my, to, my, to my colleagues, to, to my people, to my juniors, to my seniors, to the entire society. That is something that I feel we, we, it is work in progress. Mm. And uh, my, my way of looking at it is that uh, we must go out deliberately to form a national entity that is able to galvanize the, the, the aspirations of people and reduce some of the frustrations that arise out of suspicion. Uh, what would you describe uh, Kibaki as a team leader? Uh, what is yeah. this that he did that uh, is so different from what other presidents did? Yeah. <coughs> you know, in, in leadership, there are two basic ingredients. One is leadership itself, providing the vision. And the other one is uh, management. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can be a good manager, but not a good leader. Mm -hmm. uh, and Kibaki, in my opinion, was both a manager mm -hmm. and a leader. Mm -hmm. In management, you must allow yourself to multiply through the capacity of other people. Mm. Because you must believe in any society, there are people who are greater than you in terms of ideas. Mm. And uh, Kibaki was able to, to allow, to step aside uh, from the confusion of the moment, allow each ministry mm -hmm. and each minister to, t to lead a team of professionals and, uh, and managers for purposes of delivery. The rest of it was uh, you create an appointment with him so that you brief him on the things of the day and uh, the, the projections for the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything that he was not uh, sure, he did not tell you do it this way. Yeah. He would spend more time asking you pertinent questions until you explain yourself, you acquit yourself very well. Mm -hmm. Then he tells you do as you've proposed. And or at times he will ask you, where do we get the resources? Mm -hmm. So you must identify uh, the resources. Mm -hmm. and, um, and even in cabinet, it became a clearing house. Mm -hmm. Those that you bring your, 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 your paper, you prosecute it, your colleagues will uh, discuss. Yes, and, uh, and uh, once you've agreed on certain uh, point, then you agree who are the action ministries. Mm. Whether, of course, usually Ministry of Finance, as you know it, mm. uh, because of the money issue. At times, Ministry of Education, if it is something to do with an institution mm. that touches the Ministry of Education. Uh, for example, when we were handing over uh, Puani University in, in at the coast. Mm -hmm. It was a joint paper between my ministry mm -hmm. and the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. And once that is done, the follow-up is to be done by 
by you, the minister. Mm. And uh, the rest of the details, Mzee uh, Kibaki never interfered with. Mm. If you made a mistake, he would uh, ask you, we are hearing this is happening. Mm. Then you explain yourself. Mm. Then he says, what can we do to make sure that this noise is not there? Mm. Yeah, because I remember one time, <laughs> I, I went to see him with the, uh, my former MD, serious board, yeah. my peers, yeah. the three of us. So after briefing him on the same issue of maize, yeah. then I told him, Your Excellency, you know the main problem is that uh, newspapers are making this thing a big issue. Then he, to he kept a choir, then he told me, Kama tungekua na iyo magazeti tungeandika na mna iyo. Mm. Which means he was already <laughs> doubting my explanation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you owned those papers, you'll have written. You will have written the same story. Yeah. <laughs> so then he, he said. It, 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 then I realized I had lost him. Mm. Then I told him, "Oh, Your Excellency, let's." It was a Friday. Mm. Uh, we'll come on Monday and give you uh, uh, further brief on this particular issue. Mm. He told me we'll be here and. Uh, Hakuna mahali tunaenda kujeni. So I realized <laughs> that we are not about to go anywhere. Yeah. We are just around. Yeah. And uh, when you are ready with your answers, come and brief us. Mm. So those are some of the issues because for him, uh, food security was akin or was synonymous with national security. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, for him, he never wanted to hear that uh, people will go without food. You've. Uh mentioned professionals uh, severally. Yeah. Meaning that uh, you as a minister, uh, the people employed at the ministry are professionals. Yes. They have competences in uh, various fields. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you as a minister, you can't have all those competences as yes. one person. Yes. And uh, therefore, when you are going to brief him, he knows you are coming from a background Mm -hmm. of uh, technical abilities mm -hmm. and competences, mm -hmm. and therefore what you are briefing is not a god. Yeah. Uh, he, he cannot know everything. Yeah. Meaning uh, what you say, the multiplying, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the skills uh, mm -hmm. to create a wider competence because mm -hmm. everybody knows their work. Yeah. He allowed that to work. Yes. And that he did not issue directives. No. No, he, he didn't issue directives. In fact, um, you the, the way you would uh, issue something is that uh, you can get briefs from various ministries, then that brief now is done into a document mm -hmm. that you can uh, say this is what the government is doing. Mm -hmm. it, it was not just the roadside, roadside declarations. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember we went with him to to Kapkatet in Kericho, mm -hmm. and people were worried, okay, there is this hospital, and uh, what are we uh, are going to do? Mm. Uh, the new words that mm. were in Kapkatet. Mm. Then he, he told people, okay, uh, we've had, mm. and because there's nothing else we came here to do, mm. we are going to process the information in the office. Mm. He didn't say this will be done. Mm. And within a month, mm. the work started. Within three months, the place was, uh, was, was, uh, was completed. And the people respected that, that you don't issue a declaration before you process that information. Mm -hmm. And you see, that is why, uh, Cyrus, it is important that if you have a manifesto, mm -hmm. it is just your intentions mm -hmm. and your aspirations mm -hmm. and your vision about the society that you want to lead. Mm -hmm. But that manifesto must be translated into a government document mm. called policy. Mm -hmm. Policy w w is a set of ideas, strategies, mm -hmm. on how to implement mm -hmm. those ideas you had in the manifesto. Mm -hmm. You cannot say the, 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 this manifesto is going to be implemented by the officers because the officers in various ministries, they know their work mm -hmm. and they operate on policy. Mm -hmm. What is the policy direction? Mm -hmm. so, you, so you cannot be issuing policy directions that are contradictory. Mm -hmm. You will be confusing those officers. Mm -hmm. But once you know this is the slate of things that we want to do, mm -hmm. you pass it into a policy document mm -hmm. like um, we had for the agriculture sector, we had what we were calling SRA. Mm. Strategy for Revitalizing Agriculture, mm. which was affecting my ministry, Ministry of Livestock, 
Ministry of Water and other related food security ministries in terms of how to move forward for the next 10 years in the ministry uh, in that particular subsector. Kibaki took over this government uh, with the old constitution. Yeah. And uh, still, uh, the government was able to perform. Yeah. And I believe we had one of the largest governments yeah. uh, ever formed since independent. I don't know how many ministers, there were quite a number of ministers. Yeah. But yet, uh, the country uh, moved forward in a positive uh, mm -hmm. direction. Mm -hmm. We then came up with a constitution and said, no, we don't need a lot of ministers. We need a lean government. And uh, after the new constitution came into play, mm -hmm. uh, we've had uh, two governments. Uh, how do you rate their, the second, the second one is on now, mm -hmm. how do you rate their performance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thank you, Cyrus. You, you put it very well that um, Kibaki led his country with the old constitution, mm -hmm. but there was new thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, because effectively, 2010 constitution came almost towards the tail end of Kibaki regime, mm -hmm. or Kibaki leadership, and, and therefore, it is not the document that is to blame. It is the leadership and the content in that particular leader. Mm -hmm. What I usually term as ontology. What is the state of affairs of certain individuals in terms of their raw thinking? Mm -hmm. Do they respect that other professionals exist? But the danger with uh, some leaders in Africa and uh, even back here at home, is to assume that you are a professional, that you cut across all sectors. And- um, You know everything. You know everything. Mm. You know, and uh, at times when you hear people saying, okay. You are uh, number one in everything. You know everything. Drama number one. Yeah. Teacher number one. Teacher, yeah, uh, everything. Yeah. Even when you are not a lawyer, you say I'm the, the advocate of the poor. Mm -hmm. I'm an engineer. You know, th some of those things, they are laughable. <laughs> because it is a lack of exposure mm. and also a lack of interaction. Mm -hmm. You know, at times, and allow me to say this, at times people try to compare some regimes, uh, even the existing regime with that of President Moy. Mm. Yes, and fortunately or unfortunately, the two leaders come from the same community, the Kalenjin community. Mm -hmm. but. President Moy was a process-oriented person. Mm -hmm. You would spend time mm -hmm. to and ask, does the law allow mm -hmm. whatever you, you want to do? Mm -hmm. And if the law doesn't allow, mm -hmm. how do we do it in a way that we are in, 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 in conformity with the law? Mm -hmm. uh, I remember one of the interesting moments is the amendment of the constitution in the run-up to 1992 Election. A general election. Yes. Uh, where it was very specific that the president shall form the, 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 the cabinet mm -hmm. from among members of parliament mm -hmm. that sponsored him. Mm -hmm. So it was limiting to Kano mm -hmm. that if you are not in Kano, you cannot be, and you, you cannot be part of the cabinet. Mm -hmm. But towards the end of uh, the uh, 92, 97, mm -hmm. yeah, to be before the 97 elections, mm -hmm. that amendment was changed mm -hmm. that the president shall form the cabinet from among members, members of, of parliament. parliament. Yeah. Now, later on, I realized he was opening up mm -hmm. to possibility of sharing power mm -hmm. with other political entities other than Kanu. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass uh, when uh, Prime Minister Raila uh, moved in with NDP mm -hmm. to form the cooperation with Kanu and eventually uh, move into some kind of coalition government. Mm -hmm. so, so that kind of vision is required of a leader. Mm -hmm. And uh, at times uh, the current regime complains uh, that uh, we have a problem, uh, we are being stopped from doing one, two, three, mm -hmm. and yet they have people who understand the constitution, mm -hmm. they understand the laws, mm -hmm. and when you are processing something, can you read the constitution? Can one read the laws of the country mm -hmm. so that you follow the right process? Mm -hmm. Because anything that goes against the constitution mm -hmm. uh, is said to be null and void ab initio. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, you, you don't need to blame the court of law because the court of law, their mandate is to interpret whether what you are doing is in conformity with the requirements of the laws and the constitution. And one of the areas this uh, country has consistently invested heavily is in education. And you invest in something heavily because you know it, it is what will create most production. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, why are we investing in it? Mm -hmm. So what is this contradiction that mm -hmm. uh, a country invests rightfully in education, mm -hmm. yet at the same time, it is the same country that abuses the graduates that come mm -hmm. uh, out of their investment mm -hmm. without utilizing them to increase production, to create wealth for a country. Now you start telling Kenyans, we are looking for employment out there. Mm -hmm. uh, really, mm -hmm. uh, as a leader, mm -hmm. you were in the means of agriculture, you created opportunities mm -hmm. uh, in that sector. What do you think we really need to do uh, mm -hmm. as a country at the moment? What we need to do as a country is to do what I call a human resource audit, mm -hmm. to ask ourselves which are areas that we are oversupplied mm -hmm. with the human resource, uh, which are the areas that we run a deficit, mm -hmm. and what do we do to bridge the gap between mm -hmm. the deficit and the oversupply. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, when you tell nurses mm -hmm. to go out of the country, mm -hmm. when you tell our young doctors coming from various universities mm -hmm. to go out of the country and look for jobs there, mm -hmm. you are effectively, and yet, mm -hmm. our nurse patient ratio, mm -hmm. our doctor patient ratio mm -hmm. is still poor is far from what is required internationally mm -hmm. and what we feel is required for us to take healthcare mm -hmm. closer to our people. Mm -hmm. Then we employ some, um, some other individuals that you say they will be monitoring diseases and various other issues mm -hmm. is creating a mass of confusion. Mm -hmm. I would have expected, yes, we get a chance to employ. Having done the human resource audit, you will be able to see which areas are we over employing and yet they are not required in those areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, you've had many, many governors, they say they are ghost workers. Mm -hmm. And uh, my own considered view is that also there is duplication of, uh, of manpower. The second thing is that um, we need to put people where their competencies require mm. until and when we have surplus, mm. then we can export. Mm. But you cannot be exporting the best and you leave the country running without the required uh, capacity to face health care. So you will almost be contradicting yourself when you are talking on the one hand, universal health care, and on the other hand, you don't have personnel on the ground. Mm. For, your in, for, for the information of the public, uh, I did a research in uh, Bungoma mm -hmm. uh, in one of my papers, mm -hmm. and uh, it was clear 40% mm -hmm. of healthy care service mm -hmm. in Bungoma mm -hmm. comes from uh, faith-based organization. It's 60% that is done by government. Mm -hmm. And when you go to those dispensaries, there's no, there's no medicine, and at times there may be oversupply of one component of medicine in an area that is not required. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can trace it all the way to procurement, mm -hmm. where KEMSA is procuring for those counties mm -hmm. without the necessary raw data mm -hmm. coming from the county that what do they require. Mm -hmm. So my, my, my take is that uh, there is a lot of wastage, yes. both in terms of money and in terms of human resource. Mm -hmm. my, my suggestion would be how can we improve leakages in the budget mm -hmm. so that uh, we are now talking of 30 to 35 percent of what we spend goes to waste. Mm -hmm. How can we reduce that to perhaps 5%? Mm -hmm. So that 95% of the budgetary provisions mm -hmm. will go to the necessary uh, expenditure areas. Number two, how do we reduce issues of bending bills? Mm -hmm. Because what bending bills do uh, to the country is that you stifle innovation. You as a and business, enterprise. yes, an enterprise. Mm -hmm. Now, you as a business, a businessman, you are given a road to do, let's say, from uh, Likuyani to to Tarbo, mm -hmm. and that road will cost you. It's Maram Road will cost you about forty million. Mm -hmm. You don't have that forty million. You go to the bank. You borrow, let's say, twenty million, mm -hmm. 
and uh, you are not paid for three years. The 20 million with the current yeah, auction. interest rate mm. will go up to 30 million, 40 million. Mm. Now, you will be auctioned. And when you are auctioned, it is not you who is losing. It's the country losing it's because country. whatever you are doing, you will not be able to do again. Yeah. The third issue is also the issue of um, delayed disbursement mm. from the central government. Mm. It is good to have timely dispersal mm -hmm. of resources to the counties so that the counties are able to have timely expenditure. Mm -hmm. And finally, so that we don't deal on the same matter for long, mm -hmm. is that we must reduce the debt. Mm -hmm. The national debt must be reduced and we should be able to harmonize the figures. Mm -hmm. State House has another figure, Treasury has another figure, Parliament talks of another figure. Let us see what is the disconnect. The actual. Yeah, what is the actual debt mm. that we owe the, the, the locally and internationally. And when we come to the local debt, mm -hmm. when a government borrows domestically, mm -hmm. you take away money from businessmen. Mm -hmm. And that's why today the rate of interest is at 25. Well, the other day it was at 16. So these are some of the challenges that uh, any economy faces mm -hmm. and uh, it is really incumbent upon any leadership mm -hmm. that comes to this country mm -hmm. to ensure that we take care of the issues that we have just enumerated. Yeah. Uh, what is this that hinders a government mm -hmm. to create an enabling environment for this production to be increased? Mm -hmm. Like what we are seeing today, yeah. you, you don't expect to get an investor mm -hmm. uh, with those talking taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, what is this that we need to do? Yeah, uh, I, I want to begin by agreeing with you that uh, increased production of certain commodities must be done with the combination of factors that improve productivity. Mm -hmm. So that productivity goes up. Mm -hmm. If you have been producing uh, 25 bags of maize per acre, mm -hmm you go up to 35, mm -hmm. which means if you are still using the same resources and you have gone to 35, even food will be cheaper, mm -hmm. even within the local market, knowing that Kenya mm -hmm. consumes uh, about 45 million bags per year, mm -hmm. because on average, a Kenyan consumes 100 kilos mm -hmm. of uh, obunga mm -hmm. uh, per year. On average, mm -hmm. uh, some people from some parts of this country mm -hmm. uh, consume uh, almost 130. Mm -hmm. Others consume 80. But on average, 100 kilos of unga, uh, maize flour, mm -hmm. per year. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, that is now an area that you know we have a ready market. Mm -hmm. But you know, this ready market can only be good if the consumer is able to to go home mm -hmm. feeling relieved. Mm -hmm. And the producer also feels mm -hmm. I've gotten return for the investment that I put in. Mm -hmm. So the government should not be involved in production, mm -hmm. should be facilitative mm -hmm. so that you create the necessary infrastructure, the necessary environment, inclu including issues of lowering taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, evidence uh, internationally, even now, the current Prime Minister of UK mm -hmm. the other day said he wants to reduce taxes in certain areas mm -hmm. because he has witnessed tax reduction mm -hmm. improves productivity production. Mm -hmm. and production and productivity. Mm -hmm. uh, the late Margaret Thatcher, the, the, the then Prime Minister of UK, mm -hmm. Reduce taxes across board. Mm -hmm. Some of the areas that taken taxes almost up to 95 percent, mm -hmm. where you are almost being taxed for everything. It's everything, like the yeah. cost of a commodity mm -hmm. is its cost plus hundred percent, hundred percent of the same. Mm -hmm. So and, and and she was able to witness uh, a transformative agenda across the board. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've always insisted, and I would uh, respectively want to advise anybody in power, that yes, you can borrow money from elsewhere, but try to go for borrowing that will allow the country to have a trans social economic transformative agenda. Mm -hmm. Because spending on these large projects mm -hmm. without involving the people will not create wealth for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is to allow the person mm -hmm. to feel his part and parcel of that production so that the country gets richer. Mm -hmm. 
you know the country can get richer mm -hmm. and the poor are poor mm -hmm. the people are poor yes and that is the disconnect that we have now mm -hmm. because yes you you have uh, roads you have all these uh, big projects even housing but the people living in those houses don't have food don't have food yeah that is that's that's a major challenge that um, uh, a leader must have a human face all the time mm -hmm. understand you are dealing with human beings mm -hmm. uh, otherwise it's not the landmass of kenya that you are leading you are leading people and people are not statistics mm -hmm. they are real people mm -hmm. yeah the younger people in this country uh, seem not to be very keen on their civil respons uh, responsibility. You find that uh, in the last election, almost 8 million Kenyans never voted. And uh, I can bet the majority are youth, mm -hmm. meaning they have lost. Uh, the government you know, uh, doesn't mean anything anymore to them. Mm -hmm. In fact, if anything, all governments are becoming burdens instead of being facilitators. Yeah. What do you think we must focus on now and get the young people in this country taking their civil responsibility seriously, turning out to vote, electing the right leadership? There is what we call social reengineering mm -hmm. that re is required in a society like ours, mm -hmm. where people seem to have lost hope Mm -hmm. in any form of leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you talk of uh, out of uh, 21 million people mm -hmm. who are supposed to vote, or 23 there, 23 million people, mm -hmm. uh, 8 million did not vote mm -hmm. for various reasons. Mm -hmm. That is a worrying trend mm -hmm. uh, to, to our country because they seem to have lost hope mm -hmm. in any form of leadership whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from that social engineering, mm -hmm we must also aggressively play our civil role mm. by informing them that it's not about me. It's not about you. It is our collective effort that can change this country. Mm. There is what we call organizational behavior. And those who have studied mm. uh, that field of organizational behavior, uh, leadership at the top mm -hmm. creates a reflection in society. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, perhaps the leadership that we've had uh, for the last couple of, uh, couple of years has not been able to imbue or inculcate in young people mm -hmm. some sense of connection mm -hmm. between what is going on mm -hmm. and uh, how whatever is being done by those in power mm -hmm. affects their lives directly. Mm -hmm. It may be our responsibility uh, to still play that civic duty, mm -hmm. to inform and uh, improve the capacity of every young person to realize that if there is a problem anywhere in Kenya, mm -hmm. that problem is not to that community that is affected. Mm -hmm. It is a problem that should concern all of us as a people. Mm -hmm. uh, the second issue is that we need also to spend more time mm -hmm trying to identify some good leaders mm -hmm. and hold them to account. Because at times, even when somebody is a good leader, mm -hmm. if you don't hold him to account, mm -hmm. he is likely to turn into a hostage of cartels. Mm -hmm. There is this lack of African identity. And it seemed to have uh, been very clear uh, during uh, uh, the NAC government, because mm -hmm. even you came up, there were proposals, uh, even competition on uh, creating an, a Kenyan dress. Mm -hmm. uh, this identity uh, lacks uh, in the continent of Africa, uh, other than a few places like uh, maybe Kagame, uh, Uganda, you find uh, Tanzania, they really have that spirit of their country. These are the issues uh, during independence uh, that uh, the forefathers really articulated very effectively. Kwame yeah. Nkrumah, Lepo de Sengo, yeah. Sankara, who is it a long time ago, yeah. uh, Mwalimu Julius Nyerere. Yeah. Uh, uh, we had uh, serious leaders, Patrice Lumumba, uh, the likes of Nyerere, uh, 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 Muse Mandela, 
held that spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, Manema is also trying it. Uh, to uh, but, uh, our Pierre Olumumba here has been everywhere lecturing on uh, that African identity and uh, the failure in uh, African leadership, where we are just aping the West. Uh, you want to drink the wine the French drink. You want to put on the suit the British puts on. Mm -hmm. You want to, when you're speaking your English, you, you want it to come out American. <laughs> <laughs> what do we need to do? Because I believe a continent that has 60% of the world's natural resources, you find people dying on the Mediterranean. Mm. They are going to Europe to look for uh, mm. uh, better pastures. Yet the entire wealth is here. The, the, the people have been educated, they know what to do. But the failure cross board has been leadership. Mm. What is this that the, the African young man needs to look at when they are looking at a leader? So that the, we, we try and start changing uh, the failures that we have seen in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, Kagame might be high-handed, but it's a success. Mm -hmm. uh, he's creating employment, he's creating wealth. Uh, the country is uh, in a different place. Mm -hmm. uh, President Museveni might have been high-handed, but where has he pulled Uganda from? Mm -hmm. uh, Kenya was full of uh, uh, refugees from Uganda until he took over. Uh, what is this we need to do because we talk about democracy. Kenya has even ept the American constitution. We have reproduced it here. It looks like uh, the standards mm -hmm. of being a proper human being mm -hmm. has nothing to do with your culture, has everything to do with the American culture and the way they talk, the way they behave, the way they swag while walking. You find even our young people are imitating that. Mm -hmm. Yet we had this very rich culture as Africans? Yeah, uh, it's a very loaded question and it's a question that needs to be dissected into many parts. Yes. One is the issue of leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, with the risk of repeating myself, it starts with the kind of society that you live in. Mm -hmm. What is it that we admire? Mm -hmm. uh, young men and women uh, admire in uh, their role models. Mm -hmm. Uh, until that perception is uh, changed, mm. we are likely to have the same leaders mm. year in, year out. Mm. Because uh, people will talk about the vehicles they drive, mm -hmm. they will talk about where they live, mm -hmm. they will flow around with the latest suits from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Because our social orientation is still almost a product of copycats that mm. came with colonialism. Mm. Mm. How many of these leaders, if you are to look into their accounts, uh, we are not saying wealth should not be, should not be sought because you need to work hard, create wealth. create wealth, but it and must wealth. be from legitimate sources. And yes, yes, you must earn. Mm. And when you earn, you are respected. Yeah, you are respected. Yeah, you are respected. So th that, is, that is one area that we need to do what I initially called social reengineering mm. for our young people to realize that it's not about, it's not about that. Mm. The second issue is also to spend more time being vigilant as the population of a country like ours, Kenya. Mm -hmm. And realizing that for every one dollar mm. that comes to Africa, mm. Seven dollars leave Africa. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the net effect is that uh, even whatever we are talking about, IMF, mm -hmm. World Bank, or any other bilateral uh, donors or investors in Kenya, we must be vigilant so that we say, how do we invest in our, in, in our continent? Mm -hmm. uh, what is the volume of trade that we are doing with Tanzania? Mm -hmm. well, what is the volume of trade that we are doing with Zambia? Mm -hmm. Uh, with Uganda, with Rwanda, mm -hmm. how can we improve? Mm -hmm. Because we know there are things in Uganda that we need as Kenya. Mm -hmm. There are things in Kenya, you know, for example, mm -hmm. we eat more maize, uh, we, we consume more fr uh, maize flour. Mm -hmm. In Uganda, 
They produce it cheaper, mm -hmm. and therefore we should open the doors for them to export to, us, export to us and make business. Mm -hmm. So these these are some basic things that uh, any leader who is his salt mm -hmm. must take time to think on how to break down. And overall, in terms of the issue of culture, mm -hmm. we must accept, yes, that culture is dynamic. Mm -hmm. It's not static. Mm -hmm. uh, when you interact with other cultures, you will be influenced to a certain level. Mm -hmm. But as you get influenced, what are the core values mm -hmm. of your own culture? Mm -hmm. In your society, where you come from, mm -hmm. uh, what were the things that if you had something, you were expected to do when there is a, a function? Mm -hmm. You were expected even to donate to those the needy, the, the needy in society. Mm -hmm. You are also expected to provide leadership. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the lazy guys uh, were not entertained. Mm -hmm. But now today, <laughs> we, we've allowed guys to hang around centers because they are easy uh, for our own campaigns. Mm -hmm. So that they wait for you, you give them 20,000, you go, you know, in, in such a way that uh, there is a lot of idle capacity mm -hmm. in our society. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course I was impressed when our brother was talking about bottom up. Mm -hmm. But how many of those guys at the bottom mm -hmm are still at the bottom as we are talking. You it's go expanding. To, yeah, it's expanding. And you, as you go to those places, mm -hmm. you realize that some of the border border boys are now playing pool mm -hmm. because there's nobody to carry, to carry. Because there's no transaction going on. Mm -hmm. The other thing is also to think of how to make government leaner. Mm -hmm. You see, while the constitution provides for 22 ministers, mm -hmm. you find in each ministry Mm -hmm. The additional 15 or 20 people mm -hmm. under the guise they are advisors, they are special, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, you remember during your time, you had only one technical assistant yes. or personal assistant, yeah, assistant. one driver, was one bodyguard yeah. when you were minister. Yeah. Likewise, when I was minister, and when you are an MP, mm -hmm. You either drove your car yeah. or uh, you, you, you hire you, your own driver. Yes, you hire your you, you friend. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, the, the issue is how, may, how much are we allowing? Mm. Even at the level of the president, there are all these advisors on security, and yet there is minister for security. Mm -hmm. Advisors on, um, on, on finance, and there is minister for finance. finance yeah. There is governor central bank. There is a peers. Mm. Then this layer of individuals are the people who actually form the cartels and they invoke the name of the president and raid to, the country. To, and raid the country. Mm. That's why Kemsa 1, Kemsa 2, <laughs> and, and many other Kemsas to come. Uh, yeah. And you remember the old days uh, during the uh, Kenyatta regime, mm. there was um, central medical stores mm. that put uh, one of our guys in Transoia in jail. Yes. Yeah, because he raided the medical stores. Mm. So, you know, all these uh, bad manners that we have acquired cumulatively, mm. and we have forgotten that society could reprimand any individual who is seen to be deviating from the norm. Mm -hmm. We have actually become a loose society, mm -hmm. a society that I have pronounced myself as an individual at the expense of well, the entire society. Yeah. Yeah. No, you, uh, what you're saying is correct, uh, yeah. uh, my brother Kirwa. Yeah. Gidiari, I have a friend of mine called uh, Gidiari. Yes, Maina. Maina Jakwe. Yeah. yeah. Told me a story yeah. about uh, the Kikuyu community. Yeah. That uh, in the village, if you made uh, a neighbor's daughter pregnant, yes. you'll be fined and uh, they'll talk to you very seriously. Yeah. If you repeated it and you're a poor man, yes. they, <laughs> <laughs> they will do a mzinga kind of thing, yes. tie you on wood, yes. take you onto a cliff and yeah. they throw you down. Oh, so so as you die, yeah. you, you get the pain, the pain of, of, of the new, yeah. of new because really, yeah. uh, uh, and then we are laughing about it and saying, <laughs> as harsh as it was, yes, this is a culture that was telling uh, <clears throat> the young people that yeah. uh, really you have to be responsible. Yeah, nobody stops you. Yeah, from taking a girl, but yeah. when you take the girl, you yeah. must be able uh, be able to pay yes. the mbuzis that are supposed to be paid. Yeah. Uh, this very uh, deep culture that created a lot of responsibility has our period been diluted, yeah. heavily diluted. Yeah. And that when you see a young man, 
there is this thing they call uh, young girls too. This thing they call uh, uh, the, the, the one of uh, February. Uh, the one of uh, Valentine. Uh, Valentine. <laughs> you find a girl is buying herself a flower yeah. uh, because there's no boy who brought a flower, but she'll go to other girls yes, and uh, say, you know, my yeah. boyfriend brought me this and yeah. all those issues. If you look at the aping yeah. of the Western culture, yeah. where you, you are struggling with your accent yeah. to look like an American to look like a British. Yeah. Uh, but you know for sure, yeah. when you look at the content of the person, inside is hollow. Mm -hmm. And now this hollowness uh, has grown to a level. You remember we used to have this, uh, this, this uh, scams at uh, NOS. Yes. And I was approached by three people. Yeah. Can you help me join the procurement uh, department Mm -hmm. of NYS, mm -hmm. meaning the law of the farm mm -hmm. is disappearing in the young people. Yeah. And us who are before them, mm -hmm. the crimes that are committed within the system yeah. is now deeply getting into the young people, mm -hmm. believing that that is the way uh, wealth is supposed to be, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, be created. Yeah. You created even uh, uh, a dress during Kibaki's regime yeah. for this country, yeah. uh, Kenyan dress. Yeah. Uh, of course, there was no consistency, mm -hmm. just like the Michuki rules, the consistency, they, 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 they worked for a while, and then again, you find Matatus doing whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. On a cultural perspective, what is this that uh, community leaders need to do to ensure that we are not losing totally mm -hmm. on uh, our culture? that uh, we are developing a society that is hollow. There's nothing inside, there's no content. It's just epping, epping and epping. Yeah. What do we really need to do as leaders? Well, uh, as I said before, I ran the risk of repeating myself mm. by saying we need to rethink. Social engineering, you talk yeah. about it. You but we I, need to rethink. Yeah. What about our, uh, our curriculum in school? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Those issues. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I've really been pushing you. Yeah. So that. Uh, yeah. Because if this is not inculcated from an early age. Yeah. It is very difficult when you get uh, an eighteen-year-old. Yeah. And you want to change him to appreciate being an African. Yeah. You want to uh, 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 change him to appreciate when I talk my English and it's Luya English, <laughs> uh, I'm happy with it. And when I talk Swahili, and my Swahili is Luya Swahili, mm -hmm. I'm happy with it. Uh, and that I don't have to force myself to twang mm -hmm. to be important. Yeah. Uh, what do we need to do with our curriculum, uh, yeah. really, to... Yeah. Mm. Remember, uh, as I was giving the example of Nyerere, yes. I said one of the issues was put in the school curriculum at early age, uh -huh. at primary. Mm. We still need to go back. You remember, during our time, yes. there was even what we were calling uh, 4K clubs, 4K clubs, yes. Which were promoting farming, mm -hmm. and allowing somebody to realize that farming mm -hmm. is, is 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 not a problem. Mm -hmm. It is a way of creating wealth mm -hmm. and also en enhancing food security. Mm -hmm. You remember uh, uh, one time in our high school, mm -hmm. uh, somebody saying manual labor is not a punishment, mm -hmm. so that you 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 allow a child to keep the environment mm. from which he stays, mm. uh, in which he stays, mm. uh, for purposes of making it clean yeah. and habitable. Mm. So what, what we need to do is to go back to the school system, mm -hmm. inculcate those values, mm -hmm. And also give a reward system, mm -hmm. because what I've known as as a, as a teacher in my early life mm -hmm. is that for everything that you give, you must provide a reward system mm -hmm. or a deterrent, mm -hmm. because it's a reward and punishment. They go together. Mm -hmm. If you do well, you are rewarded. Mm -hmm. If you don't do well, mm -hmm. you are you are punished. Mm -hmm. Because even the, like the, the example of the Mzinga thing or the beehive, mm. 
uh, it was extreme punishment. Mm. But also if you, you behaved in a way that society does not approve of it, mm. they reprimand you or they shame you mm. by almost shunning, uh, uh, shunning, from, shunning you mm. uh, from being uh, an accepted member of that society. Mm. So we need to do that and we need to take to the basic level at the village, at the school, and even in our church. Mm. Because today, ask yourself, uh, Cyrus, who is our role model to the young people? Our role model is the guy whose wealth, source of wealth is not known. Mm. And all of a sudden is driving the vehicles, the latest, mm -hmm. is donning the latest suit, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps from, <laughs> from abroad. Mm. And uh, he stays in an exclusive area. Mm -hmm. And yet the other day, he was like me and you. Mm -hmm. So th these are, we need to change our role modeling mm -hmm. uh, in, in society mm -hmm. and deliberately go out of our way mm -hmm. to, to shun it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that takes leadership. You know, uh, everything is going back to leadership. Mm -hmm. You have to have the right set of leaders, of leaders. and those leaders must also be deliberate. Mm. You and I today, God giving us another 20 years to still remain active in our society. I know you want to live to 100, but for me, <laughs> <laughs> it was to live for another 20 or 30, 30 years. Yeah, yeah. That is enough. Yeah. Now, what we need to do is that we say, yeah. what are we leaving to our society? For sure. Yeah, if, if you are given a place of uh, public privilege, mm. Uh, it is not for you to get richer than what you are. No. It is for you to set a good example. Good example. If I'm given a position, let's say if I was to, to be a minister again in the same ministry, it's not for me to buy another farm. No. It is for me to demonstrate that the little farm I have, mm. I can produce mm. and let people copy from me mm -hmm. that yes, production is not stealing. Mm. Production and productivity means using the combination of resources you have to produce more for the market and for yourself. What are you looking at? Your next steps, because you are a leader. Yes. And uh, you cannot uh, bury your head in the sand. Yes. Uh, the country is experiencing a crisis of leadership. Yes. Africa is uh, experiencing a crisis in leadership. Yes. Uh, what are you looking at uh, doing tomorrow mm -hmm. so that uh, all of us combined without uh, jealousy mm -hmm. uh, and unnecessary competition there is enough good leadership in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you looking at tomorrow? Yeah. Because I believe, yeah. uh, you've got a brain yeah. that this country requires. Yeah. You could mentor thousands of young men. Yeah. Uh, change the way uh, everybody is looking at quick fix so that people know that yeah. they need to work. Uh, people know that we need to create, uh, increase production, uh, look for new markets create employment, utilize our resources uh, effectively, uh, and develop this country. Uh, what role are you looking at tomorrow? Yes, uh, first of all, I I'm just uh, praying to the divine providence to give me good health yes. and longer life, and also give me the humility to accept that I don't have to be the top leader mm -hmm. to make change. Mm -hmm. Change can come even from the bottom. Mm -hmm. I remember in 1954, there was uh, a technical assistant in, in Narok mm -hmm. uh, that uh, improved mm -hmm. provision of shallow wells mm -hmm. and created a water regime mm -hmm. that had persisted in Narok for many years. Mm -hmm. And he was just a technical officer in one of the divisions. Mm -hmm. He wrote a good paper, and that paper was upscaled mm -hmm. at the ministry headquarters, mm -hmm. Ministry of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I also pray that uh, we seek each other mm -hmm. and create a movement mm -hmm. to re-engineer this country mm -hmm. and remind each other persistently Mm -hmm. that the only role we have for the next 10 years mm -hmm. of our active life mm -hmm. is to make sure that we have an entity that respects the law, that appreciates the potential of each individual mm -hmm. and accepts that our role in this country is to improve it beyond the present. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mr. Kirwa, yes. I think you shared your views. Uh, I'm grateful for, on a short notice yes. uh, for us to have this conversation. You yeah. availed yourself. Yes. 
and uh, I really want to thank you. Yeah. And I'm looking forward yeah. uh, for you to play your critical role yeah. in shaping up uh, the Kenyan society. Yeah. And by shaping up the Kenyan society, we are shaping the African society. Yeah. And uh, I'm happy. You talked about re social engineering, uh, getting back onto our roots. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't thank you more than that. Yeah, thank I'm, you. I'm uh, very, very grateful. Yeah. Asante San. It's my pleasure too. Yes. It was short notice and I did not know what I was coming to do. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted us to have a conversation. <laughs> Asante. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>